how can a man be right with God? What can wash away my sin? And we used to sing this. I sing it with the children. What can wash away my sins? And I just stop. Nothing. What can wash away my sins? Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's the only way. Our sins imputed to Christ, charged to His account, He pays the penalty for them in full, and He really did it. He really bore your sins and my sins. If you're a child of God, He really bore them in His own body on the cross. They're not hanging out there in the air. You think of the most wicked things that you've done. Beloved, they're not hanging out in the air. They came down on the Lord Jesus Christ, and He paid them in full. That's the only way you can be right with God. Consider the Lamb of God in His resurrection. Raised with mighty power. There is no muscle power, no mechanical power, no electrical power, no nuclear power that could have raised Him from the dead. And that same power is in you. I'm no longer a criminal under the wrath of God standing before an angry judge. I'm a son who has been adopted into a family. You've got to lay hold of the fact that you are in a new standing. You're in a standing of grace. You're a, you're a son. Remember what an amazing thing is that you're not actually under a judge. When you sin, believer, you're not under a judge with an arrow pointed under your head. You're at a father who wants to. You're under a father who wants to pick you up and get you going again. What a change in status! Isn't that glorious? Forty-one years ago, that I began to turn my eyes away from the ends of the earth and look only unto Jesus. And now I could be facing the end and I am all the more thankful that I can fix my eyes on Jesus. When someone is still trying to get right with God by law keeping, when people are trying to merit their salvation by some form of obedience, by the things they do, then that reveals that they actually think it's possible that they can somehow earn their way to God. Your justification and your acceptance by God is not based on your performance. How well you did in your walk yesterday. You say, oh, I prayed all day yesterday. Well, you know, <clears throat> what's the Bible say? It says that our prayers are made acceptable by the blood of Jesus. Paul starts out Romans. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ for you all. You can't even thank God except through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we're called to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The very best works that we can do, you see, have nothing to do with it. Remorse has nothing to do with it. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no respite no? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. You see it more and more, don't you, brethren, that the problem of this world is not, it is not economic, it is not educational, it is not environmental, it is not political, it is not governmental. It's the problem, the supreme problem of the human race is sin. And the supreme problem always that I am going to ever have to face is sin. That is the number one enemy. It is sin and all of its forms of self. That is what has filled our, our courthouses and our jailhouses. That is what has filled the cemeteries in every city and every village. That is what has made the world a, a place of devastation and a war zone. All the crying and the pain and the tears and the death and the grief and the mishap and the sorrow and the loss. All of the tragedy is because of sin. Sin has entered the world. And we are under the reign of sin and death. It's shaking the world, causing the world itself to groan. The heavens and the earth, they groan under the weight of sin. And so what the world needs is not a philosopher. It does not need a teacher. It does not need necessarily a teacher or an example. What this world needs is a Savior. His name should be called Jesus, for he shall save. He shall save the, uh, take away the sins of, of the world. 
And even the heathen know this, right? The greatest sin you can ever commit is to not value and treasure God. All of the other sins flow out of that one. The first commandment is thou shalt love your Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the first call on every soul. That's what every piece of creation calls you to. That is the the just the thrust of the universe is that God will be worshipped because He is a glorious God. And what makes the Canaanites so wicked is that for 400 years they didn't fall on their face and say, I love you, Lord. You made the sun. You made the moon. You made my children. You made this glorious world. Forgive me of my sins. And you children, you who have grown up in a Christian home, The word is near you. The way of salvation is near you this day. So do not say in your heart that you have to wait for a certain age. Because you can believe on Christ now at this moment and be saved. And so look to him now. I'm accepted into the family by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's unchanging. His love is upon me. He's for me. He's with me. And I'm new. And I really do love righteousness. And I don't have to live like I used to live. And I'm not alone. And I have authority. Because I'm a child of God. He got down off of that throne. And he got down in the sin. And the misery. And the tears. And he touched people that had never been touched. And he spoke to people that had never been spoke to. And in his darkest hour, he got down even further as a slave on a cross and died under the wrath of God. And with a life poured out unto death, he pulled you out of that pit that you had dug. That's how the Lord Jesus loved you. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Tell them, look, if you would but believe genuinely, sincerely, really, actually, lovingly, entirely upon this Lamb of God, you would find that He paid your sin debt. You would find that He died for you. We ought to proclaim it everywhere. Tell everybody the good news that a Savior has died 